Okay, I need to warn you that this video is going to be slightly more emotional than my usual content. In case you've missed the news, Epic decided to shut down servers of their old games, because apparently maintaining them is just too much of a burden for such a poor multi-billion corporation. Honestly, this is just pathetic. Epic is raking in cash thanks to Fortnite, and they don't hesitate to waste millions on some bullshit that nobody asked for, but when it comes to their legacy, Epic acts like doing any effort with those games would make them go bankrupt. This is so irritating, because it's not like there is no interest from other studios that would gladly do the job if they would be allowed to do so. But Epic would rather see this franchise die, and now they've put the final nail in its coffin. So yeah, as a huge fan of Unreal Tournament, I held plenty of grudges with this company long before that ridiculous announcement. I had no illusions about Epic having a sudden change of heart and reviving this series someday. Not after what they did with Unreal Tournament 4, which is now going to be completely unplayable by the way. But all that was asked from Epic at this point is keep doing what they are best at, just pretend that Unreal games don't exist and leave everything as it is. It's disappointing, but the community got used to such treatment and could figure out on their own what to do with those games, if Epic can't. And yet, after burying the corpse of Unreal Tournament years ago, Epic decided to come back and piss on its grave. Jesus Christ, it's like they're doing this on purpose. Look, I don't hate UT3 as much as some other fans do. It was an underwhelming sequel, but at least you could have fun with it to some degree. But I really wonder who is the genius who thought that shutting down the best Unreal Tournament iterations while keeping the one that killed the franchise is a good idea? Is Epic really that delusional that they think that the reason why UT3 failed was because it was not free? Do they believe that over a decade later, people who still haven't played it will suddenly get interested in the same game just because they don't have to pay for it. It wouldn't have been an issue if they just shut down the servers, but they also removed all other Unreal games from Steam, even those that had a single-player campaign. Why the hell did they do that? It's like Epic is trying to force the remaining community to move to UT3 by erasing the rest from the history, and this is just disgusting. Just when I thought that Epic can't get any worse when it comes to handling their classic titles, they proved me wrong once again. What an amazing holiday gift. Thanks a lot, Epic. God, give me strength. Listen, I perfectly understand that all corporations only care about money, and Fortnite is making absurd amounts of cash, while the golden age of arena shooters has long gone. But you can be profitable and don't act like an asshole towards your old games and their community. It's really not that hard. I do hope that all Unreal games will eventually return to the stores someday, but this is such a travesty that Epic handled this matter in such a disrespectful way. Anyway, screw them, Unreal Tournament will continue to live on regardless if Epic wants it or not. I didn't plan this video beforehand, but I guess now I have a good excuse to reinstall most of the old Unreal games and tell you what to do if you want to play them online again. So let's start from the very first Unreal game. What you need to do in order to play it online is to install a community patch made by the guys from the old Unreal site. You can find the link on it in the pinned comment or the description of this video. If you own Steam or GOG version of the game, what you are looking for is the file called Unreal Gold Patch 227i. This fix is supposed to be final, but just in case, pay attention to what's written on the page. The installation process is pretty straightforward. The only thing you have to do is manually specify the folder where you have the game installed. On the first launch, the game will ask you to choose the rendering method. You can pick any of them, but if you want to set your native screen resolution without editing the ini file, just select any of direct 3D options. Lastly, if the interface is too tiny on your screen, go to the Preferences menu and set the font size option to double. And voila, you can start playing the very first Unreal multiplayer. To be honest, I never played this game online before, 
because it's legendary for other reasons. But it's worth noting that I wasn't able to play any of the versus modes online. To my surprise, most of the active community is focused on cooperative maps, where you usually just kill hordes of monsters. That's not what I expected to see, but maybe you'll be interested in giving it a try. Next in the line is the original Unreal Tournament that was released in 1999. The fan-made fixes for it are also maintained by the good folks from the old Unreal site. The difference is that community patches for this game are still in active development, so the project is hosted on GitHub. Other than that, the installation process is identical to the Unreal Gold case. Just download the latest version of the patch for your operating system, specify the destination folder, and you're all set. At the moment of recording this video, the latest patch version was 469C. I'll try to keep instructions and links in the pinned comment updated in case things will change. As for available servers, finding a match is very easy at any time of day. It might be tricky if you want to play a specific mode or map, but there are plenty of places where you can find people who would play with you. It's not surprising, because UT99 is just as fun as I remember it two decades ago. My skills got rusty, but I still had a great blast from the past and discovered a few cool mods that I've never seen before. Someone even modded vehicles into this game, can you believe it? So yeah, Unreal Tournament is still kicking ass and absolutely worth playing even decades later. As for the Unreal 2 The Awakening, I must admit that until this announcement I had no idea it even had a multiplayer at all. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who learned about its existence this way. Apparently, the online functionality was added to this game as a free expansion almost a year later after its release in 2003. I'm not sure why they even bothered with it, because Unreal 2 was a massive disappointment, both critically and sales-wise. But for the purpose of this video, I've installed this expansion pack, which actually doesn't require the original game to play it. The multiplayer of Unreal 2 is very different from other games in the series. It doesn't even have Deathmatch or Capture the Flag. Instead, all it can offer is a team-based mode, where players can choose one of the three classes and then capture strategic points on the map. It's definitely unique, but it's hard for me to judge it, because, as expected, all available servers were empty. From my understanding, none of them are official though, so I guess technically it will remain playable, you just have to find someone willing to join you. It's worth noting that there is a mod for UT2004 that's basically a full conversion of Unreal 2 multiplayer. It might be a more convenient option for you, so I'll keep them both on the list. Moving forward, now I'm supposed to talk about the Unreal Tournament 2003. But I've decided to skip this game, because it was an abandonware long before the server shut down. I'm also not sure why anyone would want to play it when UT2004 has all its contents and more. But in case you for some reason prefer the 2003 version, this solution is supposed to work on both of these games. So, the easiest way to fix multiplayer in Unreal Tournament 2004 is to launch the game, open the console by pressing a tilde button, and then pass to this line that you can copy from the description or the pinned comment. If it doesn't work, I'll also include a detailed instruction on how to do the switch manually through editing the ini file. After that, you'll be able to connect to open spy servers and find the match just like usual. And don't worry about the name, it's not some malware, but an open source alternative to GameSpy. In case you didn't know, it was an online services provider that was used by hundreds of games released in the 2000s, including UT2004. So if you feel nostalgic about playing some other PC or PlayStation 2 games from this era, this site is an absolute treasure, and you should definitely check it out. Anyway, as you can see, Unreal Tournament 2004 would also be unaffected by the shutdown of the official service. But something tells me that there will be more community fixes in the future, so I'll try to keep track of them as well. 
As for the game itself, I'll just say that UT 2004 is my personal favorite in the series, and it was nice to play it again. It's a shame that it happened under such circumstances, but it's good to know that this game won't die without the official support. Playing it again made me wish that Epic would have made its remake on Unreal Engine 5. Yeah, I know it's not happening, but a man can dream. Unfortunately, while most of the old Unreal games would remain playable, despite the actions of those cheapskates from Epic, that can be said about the latest entry in the series. So far, it seems that Unreal Tournament Alpha on Unreal Engine 4 is going to be effectively erased from existence. I couldn't even find it in my Epic's library anymore, despite the fact that back then I installed their goddamn launcher just for the sake of this game. I haven't used Epic Game Store for years, so it was baffling to see how painfully clunk and slow it still is after all that time. I would even go as far as saying that it feels like it got even more sluggish than before, which is quite an achievement. Considering how much money Epic wasted on this bloatware, I think it's even more pathetic than shutting down UT servers. How the company that made such an amazing engine can be so incompetent when it comes to this store is beyond me. Finally, there is an Unreal Tournament 3, which Epic decided to use as guinea pig for their new online services. If you'll ask me, the way they treat a crossplay between launchers on PC as something groundbreaking is just ridiculous. And considering the recent blunder with inclusion of Epic Online services into the Saints Row 4, I expect nothing good from this update. We can only hope that once the game returns, modders would eventually figure out how to play it without Epic Online services. And if there will be such a solution someday, I promise that I'll share it with you guys. So yeah, this whole mess with the shutdown of official servers is more of a symbolic move rather than something actually serious. And in this situation, we can only hope that Epic would allow someone who actually cares about those games to bring them back. But considering that Unreal games were also removed from GOG a few days ago, I'm afraid it was not an accident. Epic is deliberately trying to kill those classic titles for some petty reason, and such behavior is an absolute disgrace. It's baffling, because for many developers, having such games in their portfolio would be something to be proud of. The first Unreal was so revolutionary, and Unreal Tournament is a huge milestone in the history of online games. Writing them off like that is just wrong. Thankfully, it's not for Epic to decide if those games would live or die. And with this video, I've tried to do my part in preserving this franchise, which would forever be in my heart. Well, I hope you'll find all this information helpful, and if you'd like to hear my thoughts about the single-player parts of Unreal games, let me know about that. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and stay tuned for more.